So how fun to be at the NRB for 2020, and we're heading into Friday, the final day. Final day. Uh, um, and we have all sorts of fun stuff lined up for you today on Kingdom Pursuits. How does God take your passion and use it to build the kingdom? Well, how about save a life? <laughs> <laughs> One voice at a time. So saving lives, there's so many different ways that God has. It, it, that's his specialty. <laughs> yes, life is precious to him. <laughs> so we have Kendra Martin with us. And, and she is, uh, has this beautiful pin. She's been hang, handing out all over the N NRB. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, well, I'll let you describe it. Okay. Um, it is the uh, traditional colors for a baby boy and a baby girl, as well as white for purity. And um, the silver feet are the exact size of a 20-year-old, uh, 20, 20 week. excuse me, 20-week old baby. And um, I like the way you said that. It's not a 20-week fetus. No. It's a 20-week old baby. Baby, baby. Yeah. from the point of conception. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited here at NRB. I've learned so much. And one of the uh, mind-blowing things was the zinc spark. That when uh, a scientist had proven this, that when an egg is fertilized, there is a chemical reaction generated by zinc that generates light. So at the first moment of conception, the first moment of life, there's light. And God is light. Yes, uh, he and is. And the truth resides in light. Right. And uh, I was so blessed. I mean, God is just, he has exceedingly and abundantly above everything I could ask or think overwhelmed me here. I, I just, I started out with um, being a f really just fed up with how far... Uh, humanity has devalued life in the womb and with it taken down that nurturing mother instinct has taken down by not offering a right to the birth father uh, to protect his child which is the way men are wired um, to uh, meeting the snowflake baby family Hannah meeting this 21 year old beautiful girl who was uh, frozen at conception, along with it, a million other babies. And Man, if you were listening a few days ago, we had Hannah on here awesome. and her family and his. Yeah. Um, yeah, this it's a phenomenal story, and I love what you were telling me. That actually, in my interview, somehow and I had missed that 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 what you were saying is that the embryos have a longer shelf life than do just the the eggs or the sperm. Correct, correct. A twenty-four year old frozen embryo was just given birth to by a 25-year-old young lady. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was hard because it's, you know, growing up, it's kind of sci-fi. Um, but, and, and I love how God takes what the enemy would have for evil and he makes it for good. And God values life. You know, the name of our ministry is In His Image. Our website is inhisimageinc.com because we want people uh, to to come back to that place of value. We have intrinsic value. We don't have temporary value. We're not a dog. We're not a cat. We're not a horse. We're not a bird. We're not an insect. We're not a star in the sky. We are formed by his hand. We, obtain, we have his breath within our lungs. We are very, very valuable. We're very, very special special in all of creation and um, the only way we can get back to that I believe I heard uh, John MacArthur with uh, Ben Shapiro in an interview and John MacArthur said for those of us who have the moral authority God's living word we have the moral responsibility in any society to make sure that moral authority is heard and that's the power behind what I'm doing I'm making these short, very uh, short vignettes, 30 seconds to one minute vignettes that speak truth. As I interview pro-life speakers, pro-life doctors, parents of aborted children, I take that interview and I pull out those moments of profound truth and I make a vignette out of it. And I am now distributing it internationally in hopes that as people hear truth, because that's what gets the head in the heart, truth. 
when they hear these truth statements, it begins to work on their heart. God's word is truth. Well, speaking of hearts, how did God get a hold of yours? As uh, I, well, as I have discovered over the years of doing interviews, I'm blessed to fi figure out that Second Corinthians chapter 1 would be like, oh my goodness, I get to see that played out in a million different ways. Like God has comforted us so mm -hmm. that we could comfort others with the comfort that he's yes, comforted us. So I'm guessing <laughs> that there's a reason behind mm -hmm. your passion to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. When I was a very young woman, very insecure woman, very much in need of love and affection, um, I met a gentleman. And I wasn't walking with the Lord, though I had received the Lord at 12, but I had walked away because of m massive trials in life. Um, and I got pregnant. And I, rem I still remember that moment. Still remember that moment. And I wanted my baby so much, but I needed support. I needed arms around me to hold me up because I was isolated in a sea of lies. Even my own family unfortunately my father they counseled me not to keep the child because I needed to be in a relationship where I knew I was loved for me not because of a burden of a child and though I really wanted this child unfortunately I did succumb to the pressure and I, I'll never forget it I, it's it's you know it's in, it's there it's imprinted thankfully you know later in life God came along and I, uh, just by studying his word, not just knowing God, but studying his word, I, I read and I learned that life is valuable. And he has a reason for absolutely everything. And so, yes, I am a mother of actually two aborted children because the second pregnancy with the same gentleman, a doctor told me I could not keep the child because the child would have cerebral damage because of birth control. Who am I to argue with a doctor I didn't know and then I actually have three children in heaven and the third one is a miscarriage and that was when I married my husband we got pregnant and I lost my child so um, you know just as I grow in the Lord just as I understand value and it was my husband that gave me that terminology intrinsic value I had to ask him what is it and this was you know 16 years ago and he took a piece of paper and he wrote down intrinsic is eternal value I still have that paper in my wallet because it's it's an important message. We really need to understand how valuable we are because with that knowledge, we always can then turn to the Father who created us and say, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why this is going on. But your promise is you will work it for good for those that love you, which means trust you and believe in you and are called according to your purpose. And that's just transformed my life. So when New York what it did, did what it did, when Virginia has done what it has done, what, what the Senate just did, we need the voice of the church to rise up. We really do. And not in a vicious way because girls going to Planned Parenthood will find sanctuary in that lobby, Abby Johnson says, more than they'll find sanctuary in those people standing around telling them, don't do it, you're a murderer. That's not what they need to hear. They need to hear how valuable they are. They need to hear how much, how loved they are. That's what I found in the Lord. I'm valuable. And he wants to use me in ways I can't even imagine, such as this ministry. I have, he, he's blowing my mind. If I just am empty of myself enough, he comes through and I get to touch lives. Yeah, the word that comes to my mind, Kendra, is grace. Yes. And I think, unfortunately, it took me many, 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 many years to even begin to understand the concept. But I, I think that I would say that, you know, Isaiah 61, mm -hmm. Jesus said, I came to set the captives free, give sight to the blind, release for the prisoners. But then he says, I came to make, to declare that this year, Kendra Martin is my favorite. <laughs> I think we all are. <laughs> we are, and that's what grace. That's what grace. Really, when you think about it, what the reason that somebody feels accepted, they feel loved, because when you're in a truly godly person's presence, you feel like you're their favorite. Yeah. You you have this sense like they're interested in me. They love me, not because something I've done or not done, 
And and so here's this pregnant girl. Yeah. And, and you don't need to tell her she's messed up if that if she's not married and she's in the middle of a crisis. No. There's no no words will you know. No, what she needs is grace. What she needs is love, acceptance. I love you. We care for you. You're made in his image, this baby that you now, the light came on. And this is going to be beautiful. And this is going to be amazing. And 20 years from you're going to celebrate this baby. And in, in, in so many different ways, you'll be so thankful. You know, what they need is what it says. Jesus is full of. Right, right. Love, forgiveness, mercy, grace. grace. Yes. Right. That's what John told us. He's full of grace. Yeah. Before truth, yeah, he's got truth. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about your truth if you don't love and accept me. I honestly don't. You know, that's just how that works. Amen. Amen. We're all built that way. We all want to be accepted. We may deny it, but we all want to be accepted. We want to be valued. And it all gets down to the fact that we are valuable already. And so what a beautiful title for a website, In His Image. Yeah. And you know, what you're doing, you know, clearly, you know, loving on people because you've been comforted with the comfort okay. that God has mm -hmm. comforted you with. And yeah. he's also gifted you with wonderful ability to communicate and with a heart to really care. Thank you, Kendra. Thank you. God bless. Yeah, you too.